gentlemen, we are in a Volvo 240. The Volvo 240 is a legendary Swedish car. It might not look legendary, but has an amazing reputation in so many ways. Volvo, out of Sweden, they make great, fantastic, reliable cars, right? But when I think of Volvo, I think about the Volvo 240. For some reason, my brain goes straight to this. Now, I've done a Volvo 240 before, but it was like race card out, just crazy, right? It was nationally aspirated. It was like driving a tractor, <laughs> like that just, had a body on it. The car was designed in the 70s and they made it all the way until the 90s. So had an extremely long run where the car was not any different, essentially. It was very similar for all of those years. Basically driving this, I think about the Volvo 240 as the car that I was like picked up to school in by friends, parents, because of I just remember the holes in the headrest. I thought that was really unique. And you can find these with extremely high miles on them and they're still kicking it, right? So the story of this car is really interesting to me because it was actually found for 200 bucks. The guy thought that it was basically done so, right? Because he thought it was a starter issue or a transmission or a motor issue. They give him 200 bucks and then they realize that there's a gigantic hole in the block. So after that, they said, you know what? It's not expensive. Let's just swap the entire thing to a red block. Then along with that, they put a cam in it. So it lopes out of this little car and they have a Garrett turbocharger on it. Now, when I say Garrett turbo, do I mean Garrett GT28, like a disco potato or anything like that? No, I mean, even smaller. So it's like smaller than the palm of my hand essentially, but it still makes the turbo noises. So it's not like it's not there. So basically you go up to a corner, you had a little bit of, you brake first, you had a little bit of steering input and you feel the car have a little bit of grip, but the whole chassis kind of goes like this, a little bit of body roll. Ah, go. Oh, I'm passing a lawnmower, one of my brethren. When it comes to suspension and stuff, yeah, it's wobbly, but it just cruises like a cloud. If you think about it, what car from the 70s didn't have kind of yawing suspension like this? All of them did. I mean, you drive a classic car of any kind, because I do consider this a classic car because of it being designed all the way back then. And if you look at the interior materials and everything, they all held up really, really well. I mean, it still feels comfortable. It still feels nice on the inside. You touch all these materials and in the 90s, the American cars didn't even feel this nice inside. Sweden, they do good things. They build cars that are really long lasting, reliable. I mean, when you see somebody buy a Volvo, they pretty much keep it forever. <laughs> it's hard to let go or they just get another Volvo. It's just one of those cold followings that you gotta know people, right? It's like the Volvo is part of their culture. Brakes though. They're fine, I mean, they're squishy and old, just like you would expect, but they work just fine. You just have to ease into the pedal, and you're good. Also, I love that there's custom hood vents on this thing. On the hood, custom vents, and they actually don't look too out of character, and they're functional. That's a plus. Thankfully, they're not just like stick-on ones that you buy at AutoZone. And a lot of people, believe it or not, they swap them, they turn it into drift cars, they do project cars with these, and they were never meant to do that, right? But they have a great chassis, a reliable chassis. Speaking of, one of the claim to fames of the Volvo 240s was the crash testing. Fun fact, essentially they had a great safety record. So when you crashed it, the way it crumpled, the crumple zones all worked, people said, oh, I want a safe car for my family. I want a safe car for myself. You bought a Volvo 240. Parts were everywhere. They're easy to manage. All right. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> okay, so compared to the NA one, the NA one was like rowing a boat. <laughs> like you were in a canoe and you were just rowing it. Like it just, it's like driving a boat anchor actually. fun because of that but it kind of wore me out that car was really loud and I was tired by the end of that review but even though the suspension is floaty I don't have to put too much steering input into it now it's not like a Miata or anything but barely turn in it turns in it does just fine but that's mostly because they're so light right they're light cars cut you I mean, you're basically driving a box on wheels. So at the end of the day, 
Just imagine you're driving a cardboard box that has a good crash test rating, and that's what you're in. Also, the seat I'm on is out of a third gen Camaro. Now, what's fascinating is, if I look down, automatic transmission, but you can go into low, you can go into second or first if you're going up a mountain or something. If I look down, it has heated seats. This car had heated seats. I mean, that's like an expensive option now. And Volvo's just like, we come from the wintry Scandinavian North. Our people have to be taken care of, so they put heated seats in it. It's just a very bare bones vehicle. When you look at the dash, flat dash. <laughs> yeah, we're fine. When you go around a corner, you just think about that dog that's in the firehouse and just like, it's fine. The motor that's in this one is out of a 95 940. What does that mean? Well, very similar motor, but this actually has oil squirters. So much more modern technology in a motor that wasn't so modern. In the 90s, it's essentially, they took the motor, made it better, oil squirters, all that good stuff. And the turbo, you know. Oh, okay, there we go. The transmission, for being an old auto, I have to say, does not really get confused. I like that when I put my foot down, I can't count to three, right? You're not getting that delay out of some autos where you're just like, is it going to downshift? Now nope, this, it does exactly, like it downshifts to what it wants really. And I really admire that even though it's ancient. <laughs> there we go. That's the sound I wanted. Even though it lopes and everything, it's a straight pipe car. As I'm talking to you right now, I'm not having to yell, I'm not having to do any of that where I'm like, this car is all about. No, I can literally just have a conversation with you and a conversation with anybody in the car. And it's all because of one itty bitty resonator that quiets it all down, or at least cleans up the rasp, right? If this thing was straight pipe, it's a raspy mess, right? Well, straight pipe without the resonator. There you go. Ah! <laughs> But think about it. If you have mechanical skill, which I know a lot of you guys do, you find this car for $200, you can make this a great daily driver, especially. Like, it has character. I mean, it has a moose on the emblem. <laughs> like, you look at the emblem, giant moose on it. But also, I want to add, I didn't even know these existed. The headlights are halos on this thing, and he found them on eBay. Sure. Are you gonna get moisture in them? Yeah, probably. <laughs> it's one of those things where if you're at a car show, you turn them on, it adds way more personality to the car rather than just the standard old bricks. And the yellow fog lights look good. Even though this paint job needs a little bit of love, I kind of like that it's a little beat up because it tells the story, right? It kind of tells the story of, I found this thing that was basically destined to die, right? It was destined to never be fixed. If there's always been something about these that a lot of people have fallen in love with and never let go. People who own Volvo 240s, they don't get rid of their Volvo 240 and then they become Volvo fans pretty much for life. Volvo 240 with this motor in it, with the story, with the heritage, why should you love the Volvo 240, even though it looks like a normal car to most people, or even a beater car to most people? To me, the Volvo 240 shows that when a platform is over-engineered to oblivion, that's when a car company can really make a name for themselves because they'll run forever, right? That's kind of like why people are in love with the old Toyota Tacomas and old trucks like that, because they're practically invincible, right? And even if it does break, it's gonna be cheap to fix. So you can make this a stance car, you can make it a race car, you can make it a drift car, whatever floats your boat, daily driver. The Volvo 240 can check any box you want as long as you have the patience and time and mechanical skill to make it happen. Volvo 240, what do you guys think of it? I absolutely, I absolutely adore these cars. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. And I will see you guys next time. And take it easy. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye. This video is brought to you by Patterson Car Care. Get double of premium original detail product for half the price. Head over to PattersonCarCare.com or go to the link in the description below.